Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Now if you're a beginner in woodworking, building things can be a little bit daunting. So today we're taking a step back and I'm showing you how I built these shells from the eyes of a beginner. Now the best part is we're not using any fully complicated tools and you can build these at home in a weekend. Now you can customise these shells to be any size that you want, so follow along this video and I'll walk you through the process. Now before I even got started on this video, I went over to Fusion 360 and modelled out a small section of my room as well as the actual shells going into it. Now this step is completely optional and makes no difference whatsoever whether you do a CAD drawing or a rough drawing on a piece of paper. But now I can reference all my measurements off a CAD file. Since I got all my measurements now, we can get started on the build. For my shelves I bought some pine panels that were 600mm wide and ripped them down to 200mm on the table saw, but there are plenty of ways to cut wood such as a circular saw, a jigsaw, a reciprocating saw if you have a steady hand, and of course the old trusty hand saw, or just buy a pre-dimensioned wood. I had 8 strips of 1800x200mm, but they were a little bit warped so I clamped them up overnight. Alright, I've cleaned up these boards last night because some of them are looking a bit like potato chips, so hopefully it's taken some of the boat out. Now what we're going to do is what we should do at the start of every project, which is mark out and label these pegs. I'm starting off with building the longest shelf, that's 1500mm long. So we can measure and cut that down. I always recommend using a speed square and drawing across the whole board. I strongly suggest labelling all the pieces with some tape after you mark them so you don't lose track. I've decided to use the chop saw to cut mine to size, but of course all the other options I mentioned before will work. If you're cutting more than one board to the same size, a good trick is to line one on top of the other and mark it. That way you know it is always the right size. Odds are you're going to have some off cuts, but don't throw them away because we'll use them later. Now when assembling stuff, on every other video you'll see on YouTube, half the time the people will have a giant workbench everything set up or just get in and get it done. Now I have a workbench over there but it is pretty tiny so if you want to start now this is what I do more often than not is just, is just grab two saw horses and a sheet of wood workbench. Alright so I've cut out most of my pieces but I just like to work on one shelf at a time. So we've got our first shelf here we have two top and bottoms and then our two sides. Now there's multiple ways you could attach these. You could attach these with dowels uh, just normal screws for the top, dovetails if you really want to go very fancy, there is legit a million ways. But what we're going to do for this one is just a quick and simple pocket hole screw. Now I know, I know a lot of people don't like these ones, but in reality they're perfectly fine, they're perfectly strong. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Now your first step is going to be pick the inside bit of your wood, and I think I'm going to pick on this side, just because uh, there's a few little marks here and there little dings there and they'll be better hidden up on the inside. So what we do is we get our pocket hole jig and here we have our little depth stop here. So what this does is it stops the drill bit from going too far. Now because I'm using 18mm wood there's um, instructions that come with the packet and nine, for 19mm wood it's 89mm from the end. Now I've just come back a mil because I'm using 18mm but I don't think it really make that much of a difference. So now we grab our drill, and remember you don't have to have anything too fancy for this, just as long as it does the job. So we lock that in. Oh, got me phone on, how unprofessional. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our edge lined up here, and what we're going to do is you can take a ruler and my pencil, which I've lost, hang on. So we've lined up our edge on the table here, and what we're going to do is mark out where we want our pocket hole screws. Now I think two would be perfectly fine, but I think I might go three just for extra strength. So I'm going to mark them out nice and even. So I've got a 200mm long bit of wood and I've done one at 30mm, 100mm and 170mm. Now we line up this centre line here with our line here, clamp it down, make sure it's all straight and then drill the hole. And that's how you drill a pocket hole. Now we'll just repeat this for the other two holes. All right, we've got our three screws in this side, so what we can do, shake off that sawdust, and then just flip it around. And then we'll mark out the same measurements and drill three holes in this side. 
Alright, so now we're ready for assembly. And since we drew the pocket hole, we're going to have to use pocket hole screws. Now, it does say for 19mm, you need 32mm screws, but I'm using 18 And I'm pretty sure one extra mil isn't going to matter. Now, there is a reason why people don't like these pocket hole screws, because they're not the strongest going about. But as long as you use some good quality wood glue, you're going to be perfectly fine. Now, I personally like to use exterior wood glue, just because it has a lot of um, benefits, even though this is an interior piece. Like, um, it dries clear and it is actually dries to stronger than the actual wood itself. Now, there's one other thing I do recommend whenever you're building cabinets or anything, shelves, just anything that requires a right angle joint, is a good set of right angle clamps. Now, these things come in handy, they're going to save your life a million times. So grab the corner clamps and clamp it onto a corner. It may take a little bit of messing around to line it up, but it is definitely worth it to make sure that your corners are lined up perfect. Once it's all lined up, I like to loosen one side, let it slide out a little bit before I add some glue, and re-clamping it, then screwing it all together. Once you've checked for square, we can go around and do the exact same thing on every other side. Alright, so here's our frame that we built, and even though he's just uh, got a few pocket holes on each side, normally when you build a frame like this without a backing piece or any bits in the middle, it likes to rack a little bit. This one's really not doing it, which is a very, very good sign, and I'm pretty sure it's just because of the glue. So now our next step is to measure the inside dimensions here, and then cut our shelves out. Now the reason we didn't cut our shelves out first is because there could have been some variance when we cut out the wood, and we can do some CAD modelling all day and all night till the cows come home, but that doesn't solve for real world issues. So measuring your set, it's about 14.65, which is 3mm longer than what I anticipated measuring on the CAD drawing, which means it's about 3mm variance. I'm not worrying about that, and I don't think anybody else would either. So now what we're going to do is cut two shells at 14.65. Alright, so remember how I said you're going to need to keep some of those off-cut pieces? Well, this is the case. What we've got here is some of our off-cut pieces, and we're going to put them in each corner at the height we want for our next shelf. So, I've got these ones here at 250 mils. There's that one, and then we'll grab our next shelf, which will be 200 mil up. And then we can have a visualise of our shelf. Now you can store whatever you want in your shelf, but I'm going to be using it to store movies. We put our VHS on the bottom, DVDs or Blu rays in the middle, and then Blu rays or DVDs at the top. I'm again using pocket hole screws to attach these shelves, but you've heard me talk about these before, so we're just going to turn out the music and continue.
One of the main downsides to pocket hole screws is they leave these big holes on the other side which need to be filled. But luckily they make these plugs that kind of fit in. So you add some glue, then you add the plugs in. After the glue has dry, I like to add some tape to stop the flush cut store from marking the wood. Once that's all cut out, add a little putty in the gaps and give them good sand and you can see that it looks heaps better. It's now time for a sand and the condition of your wood will depend on what grit you use. But I went over it once with 120 grit and then finished it off with 240. For the finished I used boiled linseed oil which was a new one to me, which is applied by pouring a bit of a pool on, then wiping it in, then after 20 minutes you can wipe off the excess and leave it for 24 hours. If you want to know more about finishes, watch this video on how I made a computer desk where I talk more about different kinds of finishes and how to apply them. Just look at how much that grain pops out, how awesome is that? I finish off the shelf by adding a coat of cabinet makers wax to give it a silky finish, which is either applied with an old lint free cloth or 40 steel wool, then it's buffed off with a lint free cloth. Since that approves of the finish, I can go out and clear my old cabinet which I made in a previous video. I got all the movies cleared out and there is a lot more here than what I thought. It was time to bring in the shelves and once they were in I discovered a small planning problem. I covered one of the power points. So I quickly slapped together a riser for it and not only does it make it clear for the power points but it also looks a lot better. I also decided to add some little scraps in here to hold this filler piece and then the shelves were done. But they are looking very empty, we should fix that. That's better. how I built all these shelves and as you can see it really wasn't that hard and I am fully confident that anybody can build these shelves or something similar. And if you do, send me a photo on Instagram because I'd love to see it. If you like this video, perhaps you like some of my others. I do plenty of woodworking and metalworking projects as well as car related videos. So subscribe because it's a great place to be. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.